Hi, and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be looking at the absolute value function. Uh, you might remember absolute value from previous times where we're considering the distance away from uh, a certain number, usually zero. To look at the general form of our equation, it's always going to be of the form y is equal to some value a times the absolute value of x minus h, close that absolute value, plus a quantity k. Now, this has a couple of different variables that we're going to have to, have to describe and, and have to define. y and x, we already know about. But a is the multiplier. And a multiplier is going to either stretch out our graph or shrink it down, uh, make it wider or skinnier than the original graph. Some big things about A. If A is negative, then this graph will open down. But if A is positive, it will open up. Okay. That kind of takes care of A. Um, the other two big things, uh, if A, if the absolute value of A is greater than 1, then the graph is we can use the term skinnier. It's going to be a vertical stretch. It's actually going to thin out the graph. Uh, and if the absolute value of A is less than 1 or in between 0 and 1, in other terms, then the graph the graph will be wider than uh, the graph of y is equal to the absolute value of x. And that's true for both of these pieces here. h and k, you'll notice how h comes before k, just like x comes before y. This isn't on accident. The h value is going to be coupled with the x all the time, and h is a variable that describes a horizontal shift. And so if we had x minus 1, it's actually a shift one unit to the right. Um, so this again talks about right or left. If we are shifting to the right, you will see x minus h. If we are shifting to the right, you're going to see x plus h. Finally, we've got the k value. Now, k value is not associated with x, so it's associated with the y value. Okay, so if it's associated with the y value, y is our vertical axis, so it's our vertical shift. If you see the k value as a plus k, we're going to be going up. And if we ever see this going down, it's because it's a shift down would be a value minus k. Okay? So that pretty much explains our variables. The last big thing is that we have a, a new term called a vertex. And the vertex is either the highest or lowest point on any graph that we have. There are vertices or many, uh, there's a vertex for both the absolute value function and a function we'll study later on called the quadratic function, otherwise known as a parabola. But our vertex in this form is located at the xy point h and k. And that becomes really valuable information later on. Finally, to graph y is equal to the absolute value of x, we can create a, a chart of values. x and y. And I'm going to go from a negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. 
Okay? I choose the x value and then I go find the y value. We know that y is equal to the absolute value of this x term that I choose. So paired with a negative 2, absolute value of negative 2 is a positive 2. Absolute value of a negative 1 is positive 1. Absolute value of 0 is 0. Absolute value of 1, now we've moved one unit away again, so it's going to be a positive 1. Absolute value of 2, positive 2. Again, when we create a table like this, this can quickly become a set of points by putting our sets of parentheses around here. They're already ordered x, y, so let's go and graph them. Negative 2, so 2 to the left and up 2. Negative 1, positive 1. The point 0, 0. 1, 1, and 2, 2. If we take and connect these, you'll notice that our graph looks like a V. And every absolute value function will look like a V.